Hey, what's going on everyone? This is James with Imagery Wedding Films. And in today's video, I wanted to talk about working well with DJs. Last week we talked about photographers, this week are DJs. And the reason for these two videos is because photographers and DJs are the two vendors that we work really close with. And those are the two vendors that can either make or break our wedding films. So here are our top five tips to working well with DJs. Tip number one, email a DJ before the wedding. So just like emailing the photographer before the wedding, emailing the DJ is equally as important. Reason for this is not only because you get to introduce yourself and start your relationship out on the right foot, but you're able to ask the questions about how you need to record audio from him. Um, there have been many instances, not a lot, but there have been a few where I've worked with old school DJs. They have old school equipment. They don't have uh, the modern speakers or DJ system to accommodate for sending a signal out. Normally you just plug XLR into the back of the speaker. Well, their speakers might not have XLR or you might go quarter inch or RCA out of their board and they might not have a board that has those inputs or outputs. So this is great to know because now you're able to make sure you have enough audio recorders to mic all of the people that are going to be speaking during the ceremony or all of the people that are going to be giving toasts. Um, this is why I bought four or five Tascam DR 10 Ls the other year is because I had a situation where the DJ did not have any way to send me a signal and they had five people that were going to get up and give toast. So I had to mic each one of them. Had I not known this ahead of time, I would not have bought that many task cams and I would have only had two. And then it would have been a scramble for me to make sure that I was, you know, taking a mic off of someone who just gave a toast to put a mic on someone else. So that's always a good reason why you should be emailing them ahead of time. And also too, just to make sure you have the right cable packed. They might say, we only do XLR out of speaker or we only do quarter inch out of our board. Well, now you know that instead of bringing every cable you own, you can make sure, okay, for this wedding, I know I need to go quarter inch out of their board. Let me make sure that's packed. So again, that's just a great reason why you need to be emailing them before the wedding is just so you can make sure logistically you have everything that you need. Number two, do not interrupt the DJ when he's trying to set up. So I have heard horror stories from DJs that I know. So I have heard so I have heard horror stories from DJs that I know about videographers who will come up to them very very early and ask for a sound check, ask to plug into their board or hook up to their their speaker. And you have to understand about DJs is that they have a ton of heavy gear and equipment and they normally have a box truck or a pickup truck. Or, or a trailer that they're putting all of their stuff in that they have to park far away from the ceremony or the reception site. So they take all that stuff off, put it on a cart, wheel the cart across the beach, drop their stuff off, go back and might do that two or three times. Just because they're there, wait until they're set up. There's nothing that a DJ hates more than being under a time crunch, knowing I have to be set up in 45 minutes and make sure that I'm dressed, I'm good to go, everything's plugged in and works. The last thing they need is a videographer coming up to them when they still have two or three more trips to get all their gear to the beach saying, hi, I'm James with Imagery Wedding Films. What do I need to plug into your system? When can we do a sound check? That's the last thing from their mind. So if you see them arrive, Sure, don't go out of your way to introduce yourself, but if you guys cross paths, introduce yourself, um, and, and then wait until you know that they're ready, that they're dressed, that they have everything plugged in, you hear them playing music, you know that, okay, cool, they're ready to go. Now I can go up to them and ask for a sound check because I'm not interrupting their flow and their process in getting set up. Tip number three, give yourself plenty of time to do a sound check. So the last tip was about not going to a DJ too early. This tip is not going to a DJ last minute. Right before, let's say the ceremony starts, that's when the DJ is at their busiest. They are making a playlist for the processional, making sure that they have all of their music ready to go and queued up. They are trying to find the bridal party, making sure that everybody is lined up. They know what to do, where to go, how to walk, where to stand when they get up to the front of the aisle. They are making sure that they are doing a sound check with the wireless mic or the lapel that they're going to give the officiant. They are miking the officiant if it is a wireless lapel. There are so many things that they are rushing around to do that 
if you come up to them two minutes before the ceremony is about to start as the bridal party is lined up ready to start walking and you say, hey, can I plug in? Can we do a quick sound check? They're going to look at you like you are out of your mind. They will most likely tell you no or plug into the back of the speaker. I don't know. I don't have time to see if it's going to work or if you're going to get a signal, but plug in and go. They're not going to want to help you. It's going to annoy them more than anything. So make sure you're giving yourself enough time. That way too, if they do say, yeah, cool, let's plug in here, uh, see if we can get a good sound check. If it doesn't work, it gives them time to say, okay, well, why didn't that work? Let's, do you have another cable? Maybe we can plug in here and see if that works. But do not go up to them with two minutes before the ceremony or the toast and expect them to help you. You're only hurting yourself and you're only annoying them. So don't do it. Tip number four, don't crowd their booth with your crap. So most times your reception venue will have a predetermined space for you and the photographers to put your camera bags. Be that in a corner of the reception room, in a completely different room altogether, or sometimes behind the DJ's booth. But always find out ahead of time where that location is before you just go and assume that it's behind the DJ's booth and you throw all your crap there. Because nothing annoys a DJ more than if they leave the room to go set up the bridal party for introductions and entrances or talking to them. Okay, cool. Once you get in there, you're going to stand around the perimeter of the dance floor, blah, blah, blah. And then they come back to their booth and here's your light stands and your tripod bag and your camera bag and they have to step over it and now they feel confined and claustrophobic in what already is a very tight area. Um, that is not what DJs want to deal with and if you're the videographer who is unloading all of your crap behind his space and making it inconvenient for him, he is going to hate you more than he has ever hated anybody. So. Always check with the DJ, always check with your venue, even ask the DJ and say, hey man, is it cool if I were to put my stuff here? Is this in your way? Do you need me to move it? That to him is gonna show that you care um, and it's just gonna make him enjoy the process of working with you a lot more. Tip number five, most DJs hate lights. So if you have filmed at least just one wedding in your entire career, you know that DJs do not like lights. They do not like your bright LED lights that are polluting all of the space of the dance floor. You know, they don't understand why we need lights. And as videographers, we know we need lights for toast, for entrances, dances, open dancing, because the light adds depth to our images. It brightens up people's faces. We see the importance of having those lights where DJs, I guess, will look at it and say, well, I have a laser package or a disco light package or a party light package that the couple added. And with your lights flooding the dance floor, you know, they can't see my lasers or my party lights. So again, going back to tip number one, where you're emailing the DJ ahead of time, this is a great opportunity to say, hey, here are the lights I use. Here's why I use my lights and kind of educate him a little bit on why videographers use lights. But, you know, DJs, they don't like having so much light and majority of the time they will uh, come up to you and say, hey, can you turn off your lights or can you do something different with the lights? It's too bright. And our first reaction might be to say, you know, screw you, man. Like, no, I need my lights. But that's not a good way to handle any situation, especially when you're trying to work with a DJ um, who ultimately can refer you out in the future and enjoy working with you and want to really help you get the best video that, that you possibly can. So for this, we always recommend just kind of meeting them in the middle and saying, look, um, you're telling me to turn off my lights because they're so bright. I can't quite do that because I still need light. So what I can do is I can move the lights further back from the dance floor so I'm still getting the pop on the people's faces um, while not being so bright. Or you know what, maybe I don't need to have two lights going, maybe I just need one light, so let me do that. Working with them, even if it means taking down a light or moving the lights a little further back. It might not be ideal for you. It might not be what you want, but DJs will appreciate that you're willing to work with them. And at the end of the day, working with them is going to give you better results than trying to fight and argue with them the entire time. So there you have it. Those are our top five tips to working with DJs. Hopefully you can implement this on your next 
uh, wedding, really just be friends with the DJ. The DJ, again, can make or break your video. He can decide that he doesn't like you and he doesn't want to help you with sound checks or getting the best audio. And he's going to put up a fight with you because he doesn't want you to have lights. And ultimately, those are things that if they're not done properly can really affect your video in a negative way. So reach out to your DJs ahead of time, work with them, be friends, try to be on the same page with them and just educate them about what you do and why you do what you do before the wedding for the best results. So thank you guys, appreciate it. If you can hit subscribe, like, that would be awesome. And we'll see you on the next one.